In this video, we're going to be building some chain link fences. Primarily for tabletop gaming purposes, but you could use this technique for other projects like model railroading, for example. For the bases, I used 1 8 inch hardboard and I cut 3 quarter inch strips off of that. The fence posts are going to be laid out every 2 inches, so I cut out some 8 inch, 6 inch, and 4 inch long bases. Because I want to have a couple different size options. I rounded the edges of the bases with aviation shears, and then beveled them with a razor blade. I also made some bases for fence corners. For the corner pieces I cut a 2.5 inch strip of hardboard out. I cut four two and a half inch pieces and two larger four and a half inch pieces off of that strip. Then again, I rounded the edges with aviation shears and beveled them. On my original test piece, I used this mesh material. You can usually find it in dollar stores or pretty much any department store would probably have it. Places like Goodwill will usually have things like this as well. This is just a file organizer. What I'll do is I'll just use this mesh stuff, just cut it into strips with my aviation shears. They work pretty well for that. You can get these in left and right versions, so make sure you get the right one if you pick a pair up. So anyway, this is what I used for my prototype version, but I think I might try using some of this aluminum mesh instead. This stuff is a lot more pliable. I might cut out like a little test piece. You can see it, it really stretches. I'm gonna try that out, see how that goes. This aluminum mesh is used for screens for windows, screened in porches, etc. We're gonna use three different types of meshes for this project. The first one was from a prototype I made, and the other two are aluminum and fiberglass mesh. You can find them in hardware stores. You don't really need a lot of this mesh, so if you already have some or you know someone who might have some and might be willing to give you a small piece of it, that might be better than buying a full roll just for this project. To get that chain link fence diamond pattern, you have to cut diagonal strips of this mesh. For my fences, I decided to go with one and a half inch strips, and I figured out that spray painting the aluminum mesh prior to cutting it really helps make it easier to cut and also form. As you can see on this test piece I did, the spray primer makes the aluminum less springy and uh, helps it hold its shape a little better. However, the spray paint didn't really seem to do much to the fiberglass. To cut this stuff, I made an initial cut, trying to make it as straight as possible. Then I drew a guideline at the 1.5 inch mark and cut along that line. Getting a perfect cut is a lot easier once you've made a rough cut. So after making that initial cut, I would look at the piece and see if there were any areas that needed to be trimmed. It's a lot easier to follow that line with your eyes once you have a rough cut made, if that makes sense. To assemble the fence posts, I used bamboo skewer sticks and a simple jig made of heavy corrugated cardboard. If you're like me, you get a lot of stuff shipped to your house and eventually you're gonna get a box that's suitable for this project. If not, you can get moving boxes at most hardware stores that would work just fine for this. I cut out three jigs for the straight fence pieces and I also made three jigs for the corner pieces, which we'll get to soon. I spaced the posts out roughly one and seven eighths inches apart. To assemble these, first make sure there's a nice clean cut on the ends of the skewer sticks, and they're all sticking out at least two and a half inches. I butted the cardboard jig up against the cutting board and supported it so that the skewer sticks laid flat against the cutting board. Then I cut another skewer stick to sit on top of the poles. I glued the frame together with wood glue, giving it plenty of time to dry, and like I said, I assembled these three at a time. It does help to put a paperweight on top of the jig to help hold the frame down nice and flat. Once that first pass is dry, flip the jigs and glue the other side. I cut up some toothpicks to create some lower bars for the fence frame, and again glue these one side at a time. I used my pre-cut mesh as a guide to make sure that the toothpicks were positioned properly. You do want the mesh to extend past the top and the bottom bars a little bit, a little more so on the bottom than the top. Once that wood glue is dry, I laid the pre-cut mesh out over the frame. I weighed the mesh down with some glass beads and glued them together with some thin CA glue. You'll want to give that at least an hour to dry, unless you're using some kind of accelerant. Then just snip that fence off, leaving about an eighth of an inch gap on the bottom, and repeat that process until you have as many fence pieces as you want. 
The glass beads weren't really heavy enough to weigh the aluminum mesh down, so once again I did have to uh, bust out my paperweight. So next I glued the fences to their bases with CA glue. You can add some sand here to help hold them in place. And again, give them at least an hour to dry. And to finish the bases, I covered them with wood glue and sprinkled on some gravel, followed by sand. For the corner pieces, it's a pretty similar process. I made these 90 degree jigs with cardboard and hot glue. For these, I let the corner posts stand about an eighth of an inch higher than the top bar. And once again, I glued everything together one side at a time. And I also started making angled cuts on the toothpicks so they would uh, hold themselves in place a little better. And honestly, I think that worked better than straight cuts. I cut some toothpick supports for the corner ends like so to support the mesh because I didn't want the mesh to cover up the corner post. If the mesh looks a little weird, you can always trim it after everything's dry. Since there's quite a bit of real estate on the corner bases, I decided to load them up with greeblies and corrugated paper. I added some to the straight fences as well. Then I gave everything a base coat with aluminum spray paint primer. And also for the base coat, I mixed some dark brown paint, Mod Podge, and wood glue together. And I covered the bases with that. It was fairly difficult to get to the spots between the greeblies and the fence, but I did my best. This paint coat does not need to be super clean. Just try and avoid getting it on the fence if you can. You can always just go in with a wet brush and just blend it in. All right. The base coat's nice and dry. At this point, I'm gonna try cutting some holes in the fences to show you what you can achieve with the aluminum versus the fiberglass. First, I'll show you this one. This is the one with the original mesh that I used. I'm not gonna do too much to this. You can bend this stuff. I don't think you can get as realistic of a look as you can with the smaller aluminum mesh. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna bend this one, but I'm, I'll say you, you could do it if you wanted to. So I'll set that one aside. They look so similar, I can't tell just at a glance which one's which, so I have to feel them to tell. <laughs> Okay, so I used aluminum for the majority of these because I knew I was going to be able to bend it. I was going to go over here with my snips. As you can see, that cuts apart pretty easily. Let's see, we go down here to the bottom. The spray paint doesn't really seem to affect this stuff nearly as much. You can kind of bend it a little bit, but it's very loose. It doesn't really hold its shape as well as the other stuff does. I mean, you could, you could potentially put some thin super glue on there to uh, kind of help to hold it in place, but like, it's still pretty loose. So first I'll show you these two. Um, I, I decided to make the smaller pieces broken down so I could, if I want to make it look like a, like a tank or a vehicle drove through a certain spot, I can use these. If you would use actual wire instead of these um, bamboo sticks, they, you could get a much more convincing bend look on the on the poles here. Um, you can actually see the where the the bamboo stick snapped there. So I was just trying to cover that up. You can actually bend the stuff; it'll actually hold its shape. Yeah, I mean, it is a little sharp, so you got to be careful with that and just be aware of it when you're handling it. You might poke yourself. I like how this one came out a little bit more, but again, you can really see there the bamboo skewer really isn't ideal for uh, these types of breaks. Yeah, we use one of the shorter pieces. How about that? I don't really like cutting it with these. I don't want to damage these if I can avoid it. So there we go. Yeah. Okay. See, you can. If you want to do this, I would suggest doing it after you spray paint it. it kind of helps to hold the metal pieces together. I mean, I feel like you get a much more realistic look with that over the uh, fiberglass. 
Um, yeah, I, I don't want to do a whole lot of these. Maybe I mean, I can always add this later if I feel like I need more, but honestly, if you want to have a hole in the fence, you just take two pieces of fence and just move them over a little bit. And it just depends how much like damage you want on your fences. Cause you could have like really damaged fences. I wanted this set to be mostly intact. Um, or you could maybe have some of the edge hanging down here. Yeah, it doesn't really take much. You just bend it with your fingers or, or pliers, snip off some of the loose stuff. Yeah. And that looks kind of cool. I mean, you can also maybe add like some, some bends or some bowing. Like that. I think that really adds a lot to the piece. Just doing something simple like that. Even just like going, going through, just doing little minor things like that. So it's not just a flat edge. It looks a little worn and weathered. Um, you could take something and pop out the bottom a little bit. Or push it in. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of what you can achieve. Next I grabbed a few paints some cheap metallic paints and some soft body primary colors. Try to pick some colors that complement each other and will look good with rust, that's my advice. I went with some yellows, oranges, and reds with a few metallics and blues. Again, you can be a little messy here. You know what, that's good enough. <laughs> the most important thing is to try and avoid getting paint on the mesh. One way to get the other side of um, whatever you're trying to paint, if you if you can't reach it, is to just paint along the fence line here. Just put a little bit of paint on the, the actual fence and then just uh, blow on it. And uh, boom, kind of transfers it through. <laughs> I mean, it works. And then you can just take a little bit of water and just lightly brush that away. Yeah, I mean, it works good enough. <laughs> for this. We're going to use three different brown colors for the dirt. For the darkest brown, a stiff bristled brush works best. You want to get some pretty heavy coverage around the bases and greevels. This is where you cover up that messy paint job and blend everything together. And it does help to have a smaller brush to get into those tight spots. Moving on to the mid-tone brown, I'm using a dry brush here. And once again, a smaller brush when needed. And finally, the light brown. Just trying to create a little more contrast here. These are already looking pretty dang good, but you know we gotta add some rust. The main challenge with rust is not going overboard. You can always add more later, so just start with a little bit and don't add too much in one pass. I did apply it pretty liberally over the areas where the super glue is clumped up. It's a pretty good way to hide that. Oh yeah, just needs a matte finish to dull the aluminum paint and a bit of greenery, a few wasteland tufts, and a mixture of Mod Podge and Flock. I applied that around each base sporadically. and then went in selectively applying Mod Podge directly to the bases and creating thicker areas of flock. And that's pretty much it. I think these came out pretty good. I hope this gave you some ideas if you're considering building some fences of your own. Maybe you were on the fence about making some fences and now you're ready to take that leap.
I'll have a link to all the products used in this video down below. And finally, I want to give a shout out to my patrons for supporting this channel. I don't usually run sponsored ads in my terrain videos, so any support I can get really helps. I appreciate it. That's all for now. Hope you have a good day and I will see you later.